Hello and welcome back to On the Workbench. Today we're going to be doing a coolant flush. And so to get started here, let's go through some of the supplies that we're going to need to do this. So first of all, we're going to need enough extra coolant to be able to replace what we're taking out. So we're going to need about four gallons of coolant. And as part of the flush process, some folks prefer to use a garden hose. I'm actually preferring to use actual uh, distilled water. I know it's clean fewer of, and free of impurities. I don't want to get any sort of other impurities into my cooling system. And then I'm going to use some form of a radiator flush. And here's this one from Peak as well. It's made in America, made in America, so that's good. On the antifreeze, freeze, you want to make sure you get the right kind. There's different colors of this uh, for different vehicle types. So if you use this green, orange, red, or whatever, make sure you check your owner's manual. If, you're use, if you've got a newer General Motors car, it's probably going to use uh, Dexcool. And you can look to see that on the label. That if it is Dexcool compatible, it will have a Dexcool mark on it. Then I'm also going to add to that uh, AC Delco, which is the parts company for General Motors, also provides these coolant system seal tabs that you can dissolve these. We'll talk about these whenever you put them in. But one tab here, uh, you use about one tab or one gram uh, for every quart. And then I'm also going to mix in, uh, this is from Royal Purple, Purple Ice. It's a coolant system additive to help uh, make sure that my cooling system runs clean and clear. A couple other supplies that you're going to need. You're going to need some sort of a low-profile pan. This is small enough that I can slide it underneath my vehicle. And then some sort of uh, bucket or something that you can use to retain the coolant. Because we're going to make sure we recycle the coolant properly and responsibly. Let's talk about the tools you're going to need to do this job. So a couple of tools that we're going to need just to get out of the way first. Safety glasses. If you're working around coolant, you want to make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Also, we might want some gloves to be able to protect your hands so you don't get the coolant all over your skin. It has just a really slick, weird feeling on your skin. It's not really good for your skin. Not that any automotive chemical is, but probably you want some gloves. And then you also might want a hammer if you're going to use the uh, sealant additive. A pair of hose clamp pliers. But, and those are going to be four, and this is kind of the secret weapon in this, is a, is a, uh, a length of 3 8 inside diameter tubing, because there's a drain port on the back side of the radiator that's going to allow us to uh, drain the coolant out through the hose to our catch pan. And so the 3 8 inside diameter hose will fit around that just fine. You won't need any extra little crimps or anything else to do that to hold that in place. Uh, you also may want a T30 screwdriver to be able to remove the top engine cover to be able to get to your upper radiator hose so that you can kind of uh, bleed it out. And then to open the petcock, you can either try to use your hands or a pair of pliers, or you can also use one of these specialty sockets. This is a blue point socket, uh, basically from Snap-on, if you will, uh, that allows you to be able to then open the radiator socket uh, with this. You can see how it's kind of got a cross member there. You can use it to open it up. And then you may want to stick this on the back of a 3 8 extension and then have a 3 8 a nice small 3 8 ratchet. In this case, here with a flux head that you can use this to get in to open it up and close it. Works great. Another little secret uh, bit of kit there that works pretty well. In my case, I also ordered an extra pet cock. I figured just in case if mine somehow didn't seal right or something goes wrong that I, uh, I've got this extra pet cock on the side in the case of the gasket because there is a rubber uh, o-ring right here just in case anything got messed up on it or I pinched this off somehow that because without this it's not going to seal back up for me this was cheap insurance here's the part number on that it's uh, 2441110 you can get this through like uh, eeuroparts.com or similar sources for Saabs. Uh, this part is made in Poland. It's got the GM uh, logo on it and it even comes with a hologram on the packaging. Pretty fancy. And then the final tool is going to be the spill-free funnel from Lyle. This is going to allow us to be able to fill our coolant bottle from the top and provide a nice little seal so then we can burp out uh, any air that's in the system at the end of the job and make sure we got enough coolant into our cooling system. One last tool that you're going to need is an 8 millimeter socket for being able to remove the lower uh, front skirting that's going to uh, allow you access to the pet cock on the radiator. So just a simple 3 8 drive, 6 point socket is good enough. Just a quick look at how the socket actually works 
on our extra drain plug with the cross section of the socket here I can basically put this straight over the plug provides very little slop it's an almost perfect fit the, the diameter on this is almost perfect and then you can just turn it with the ratchet you might want an extension there just to be able to get out of the way you know, open up and close no question about if you're turning it right or you're pinching it off or biting into uh, your plug so that's why I'm going to use the socket here and have this available for you. So it just provides an extra bit of positive affirmation that it's all sealed up correctly. You also may want a light to be able to help you see underneath the vehicle as you're trying to find the drain plug and look around uh, just to make sure everything's all taken apart, removing the lower housing. Welcome back. To get started with our coolant flush on our 06 Saab 93, I got the hood open here. Let me just point out a couple quick things here about the cooling system. Normally, you'd look in front here and you'd be looking to try to find the radiator cap in front. You'll notice, if you, especially if you own one, that there is no actual cap on this radiator. However, there is the overflow or the expansion tank in the back. Uh, up against the firewall here, it's got a yellow cap on it. And so that's going to be one of the key points that we have to access the system from above. And if we get down a little bit further below that is where we're going to find our thermostat. We'll be replacing that too as part of this job. I'll go into more detail about that whenever we get to that point. Due to the ground clearance on this vehicle, it's not that easy to get underneath it. So you get a couple options here. Either put the car up on jack stands, uh, which is fine. You can do this with just front jack stands, or all four is probably better. You get a better angle on your cooling system. And then number two, the second part of this, is that up underneath the vehicle, there's a little bit of skirting underneath here that we're going to have to remove with an 8 millimeter socket to be able to drop down to be able to access our radiator, which we can sort of see here through the front bumper, but it's covered from the bottom just to help with the aerodynamics of the car, so we've got to drop down that cover before we get access to our pet cock. And so I'm going to start without the car on jack stands and show that it can be done that way. This is what the lower cover looks like when it's removed. If you've got fog lamps, there may be a wiring harness that's sitting on the driver's side. You can sort of see that there. That'll prevent you from being able to pull this all the way off. So you can just slide this over and out of the way. Everything else we're going to do is on the passenger side. And so then we can have that out of the way. You may find some other debris up there, some little rocks, chips, gravel. Go ahead and clean this off while you've got this apart. And you may want to do some other repairs to it if you find any other cracks or dings to it that you want to fix. Obviously, this is a good time to do it. And now on the passenger side of the car, we're going to be looking. And once you find the lower radiator hose, which is just behind the strut here, hopefully you can see that there, the drain cock is actually on top of the strut here. It's kind of obfuscated, but it helps to protect it. And then if you can sort of see, I've got a clear hose that's connecting up to the output because the output of the drain cock actually goes backwards towards the rear of the vehicle and will cause a massive splatter when you open it. And so I've got a piece of, it's about 3 8 inch inside diameter clear tubing going around there. And then the drain cock is located right here. I have to give that a 90 degree turn to open it up. And then I'm going to have the coolant come out the other end of my hose into my drain pan. This is one area that if you're, for this, it might help to have the car up in the air. But if you've got a little bit of a dainty touch and some patience, you can do this with the car on the ground. So you don't have to go all the way out of your way to jack up the car. But if you jack up the car, you might be able to make this a little bit easier. But it's still kind of hard to get your hands in there. So if you've got some, someone with some dainty hands or you've got, you're just very dexterous with your hands, this is a good time for that. And once that hose is attached, we're going to come to the top side of the car. And we're going to open the reservoir cap so we can get the air pressure to help push the, the coolant out and into the pan. Obviously, the end of our hose is going to have to go into our drain pan. With the vehicle up on jack stands, you can see where I got the clear tubing connected right up here. And then you can see the pet cock here. I've got to give this another uh, more of a turn to be able to get access to the coolant to be able to come out the clear hose that's going down my radiator pan. So now you perhaps hopefully can see a little bit better under the car what that looks like. I just have to be able to get the right pair of pliers on that from the side here to be able to get that turned. If you had a good uh, socket that's used for installing wing nuts, this might be a good spot to use that as well.
Once I'm pretty close to getting most of the coolant out, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of distilled water up into the coolant reservoir to help push out some remaining coolant. I also have taken off the engine cover with a couple T30 screws, or I'm sorry, the use of a T30 screwdriver. And then I can use this hose here, kind of help to burp the engine to help squeeze out coolant. Also, I've got my pan here, just a touch less than half full, give or take, maybe it's two fits. But I'm going to go ahead and push this through with a little bit more distilled water. Once you've got most of it out, use your hose clamp pliers to be able to close off this hose so then we can drain our waste coolant into a bucket clearly marked waste coolant for proper recycling and disposal. I had to actually go for another bucket because my other bucket was full. This is bucket number two. This is the second vehicle I'm working on of the evening. And so I let's go on the bucket number two. And now I'm going to close off the petcock underneath and add my coolant flush to the top and more distilled water. And then I'll be starting the car and running the engine, I'm sorry, running the heater on high to be able to circulate everything through the heater core with distilled water. And we'll compete the, continue this process. While you're in the middle of doing a coolant change, good time to also change your thermostat. So I've got an OEM thermostat, it's AC Delco. Remember Saab does run on a General Motors engine. So you should expect genuine parts to be AC Delco. I was able to order this on Amazon. This is about maybe $16 or so, give or take. It's got a rubber gasket with it. Very simple. It's easy to, well, I guess I don't want to say it's too easy, but the ideal time to do it is when your coolant's out of the system, because otherwise there's coolant on all sides of it. It would make a big old mess. So while you're, you're changing the coolant, go ahead and change this, especially if you're close to 100,000 miles. These aren't going to last forever. So just go ahead and give it a change. I'll put a link below in the description for this part. As far as the tools for changing the thermostat, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket, a quarter inch socket with quarter inch extensions and a universal joint is uh, probably going to work well. I also found I could get away with a 3 8 with a universal socket where the universal joint is built into the socket, but this will not work for one of the bolts because this is too wide for the opening you have to get the extension through to be able to get it out. So a couple extensions a 3 8 ratchet, and I also found, I don't know if I've ever shown this little uh, guy on my channel before, my little quarter inch stubby, this is a made in France uh, fakem ratchet, but any other small, just quick palm uh, quarter inch ratchet, or maybe even a 3 8 would work too, but just to be able to ratchet things back and forth really quick. If you're looking for a great little ratchet, these little uh, stubby quarter inch uh, fakem ones are made in France, are actually fantastic. I'll do another video on these at some point, but I had to reach in uh, deep inside my other tools to be able to grab this. Worked well. And so that's it for the thermostat. Now back on to the rest of the cooling system job. And so if I'm on top of the car here and you come back, you got the coolant reservoir here obviously in yellow. And then I got my light. And then right down And then right down there, you get your turbocharger there over to the left and the coolant reservoir to the right. And you can see my old thermostat right there. The hardest part is getting to the bolts. There's three 10 millimeter bolts and you'll be tor torqued down to seven foot pounds. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this one out with a pair of long pliers. And so you're gonna need a couple extensions, a 3 8 ratchet, a torque wrench, and probably a set of long pliers to get down in there to set your bolts. It's a little bit of a tight space, and you've got to be able to reach over the fender quite a bit to get there, because it's kind of obnoxious to get to, but it's not that big of a deal. It just takes maybe about an extra 25, 30 minutes to be able to get there. So reach over and then pull that out and then drop the new one in, and then torque the three bolts down to about seven foot pounds a piece. With my new thermostat all tightened up with three bolts down to about seven foot pounds, I can put the engine cover back on, and then I will be able to remove my hose with the, with the drain cock closed and refill my car with coolant. And then properly dispose of the old used coolant. If you're looking for a way to dispose of that, the EPA 
where your state EPA might have recycling days or permanent facilities nearby. You do not dump this, dump this in streams or share this with other animals. It's very toxic, and supposedly it's sweet. I've never tasted it myself. You shouldn't either, but they say it's sweet uh, with the ethylene glycol mixture, and it's uh, very deadly to small children, probably even adults, and definitely animals. So I'm going to go back to my trusty spill-free funnel. So I'm going to put my coolant in through the spill-free funnel. Now I've got a bucket here that I've already mixed some of my peak antifreeze with a bottle of the Royal Purple antifreeze additive. And so I've got that in this bucket here mixed up. So I can just pour this into my spill-free funnel and be good to go. Alright, I'm going to use the AC Delco cooling system seal tablets. Again, engines is a General Motors product, so AC Delco is the OEM. And so these are designed to seal the engine. And it's to take about two tablets for this engine. It's come in packs of five. And so I'm just going to take the dust out of here and add it to this lint-free shop towel. And then I want to take this and just simply kind of fold it over keeping track of where my tablets are in here. Right there. And I'm going to use my hammer. Then now I've got a nice pulverized dust. This is supposed to be able to then dissolve into uh, the coolant. I'll see if I can just and so whatever dust is there, now I'm just gonna go over and then add this to the reservoir tank on the car. Now with the system seal and additive added, all that's left is to reattach the cover or the lower radiator cover back up to the vehicle. I'm not going to show that and take it off the jack stands and remove the drain tube from the radiator and then dispose of the coolant. And that's all that's left. Okay, so now to wrap up the job, our last step is going to be to actually leave our, fill, our spill free funnel in place. And we're going to want to uh, run the car, vary in our idle, uh, making sure we have the heater on and all the way up to make sure our thermostat can open up and to be able to get coolant all the way through the heater core and back to make sure that we've got enough coolant uh, in our bottle up to the magic mark. Now this bottle here actually does have a line that goes from the bottom and goes down. So this is both an overflow tank and basically our pseudo reservoir uh, for a coolant to fill it. And so that means that you're gonna to wanna to stand by to have extra coolant ready because you want to make sure that, the, that that does not go too low and it stays within the limits that are marked on the front side of the bottle here. And then you can and basically then burp out any air that you've got in the system. So as you rev the engine and just get it to move the coolant through and bring it up to temperature 
So obviously you have your garage door up. If you're doing this uh, in your garage, you never run your car with the garage door down. That's very dangerous. And then so it can push the coolant through the engine, uh, trying to get any burps out that you've got or any air bubbles that are trapped because you don't want trapped air bubbles, just get them out. And then the spill-free funnel, it'll kind of burp and belch and kind of bubble up to the surface. So you want to do that. So obviously you want to make sure you got enough gas in your vehicle before you start this job that you'll be able to idle this here because you might want to idle it for 15 minutes or so, varying uh, the speed as you press the accelerator just to try to get the move through. And then that's it. And then put your cap, uh, take this out, put your cap back on, and you'll be good to go. Close your hood, and you'll be on your way. Overall, this job probably takes maybe an hour to hour and a half. It's not that bad. Just about anyone can do it. Uh, the most important thing, and maybe the most difficult part of it, is being able to properly dispose of your coolant. At least where I live, I'm not able to actually take coolant back to AutoZone or Riley or any of the other auto repair places. But going through the local uh, EPA board, They've a couple times a year, they have household hazardous waste pickups. So I per personally time this job to be able to match with a household hazardous waste pickup so that I can just drop off the coolant and be done with it and I'm not stuck storing it in my garage for a while or paying someone else to take it away. Um, if you live somewhere that your local auto parts store will take it, I'm proud of you. I wish that was me, but that's not my case here uh, for me. And so that's it. Good luck on doing this job and have a great day and I'll see you back here for another video. Bye.